second thing that we need to reconcile God's foreknowledge or destiny with our free will is something within us should have access to the universe at this fundamental level, this probabilistic level. The physical body should be very much included in the universe as it is made up of the same stuff that everything else is. So it is our essential self, our consciousness, that should affect the universe at this fundamentally probabilistic level. And this is the observer effect of quantum mechanics. It is the consciousness of the human being that chooses one option out of the collection of probabilities represented by the wave function. How is this conclusion derived uh, from quantum mechanics when a single electron double slit experiment uh, is, uh, produced an interference pattern and it was concluded that individual electrons are also probability waves. The next question that arose was that why don't we see the superposition of the electron? Uh, why when the electron falls on the screen, it falls as a point particle? Uh, but we know that the electron went through both the slits at the same time uh, and occupies these multiple locations at the same time because when we collected the number of electrons on the screen, after some time they made an interference pattern of alternate dark and bright bands, just like a wave would. So the answer to this difficult question was that it has to be something in our measurement or observation that is making this electron behave normally and fall like a point particle on the screen. This is called the collapse of the wave function. Now the screen, the observer uh, is made up uh, of the sa same stuff. I mean e electrons and protons, we are all made up of the same things. So the electron is a wave, the screen that detects it is made up of the same particles that behave in the same way. The eye, the brain of the uh, human being or the observer that is taking up this data is made up of the same particles that behave in the same probabilistic wavy way. Then what? could it be that is collapsing the wave function and even from common experience we know that when multiple waves merge it just produces a more complex messy waves. So this led some really smart people who won Nobel prizes like uh, John von Neumann who is famous for writing the bible of quantum mechanics to conclude that there has to be something outside the system that is not made up of these particles, something non-physical and immaterial. This is the consciousness of the human being. It is the consciousness of the human being that chooses reality out of the various probabilities. Because destiny and free will are mostly understood in the framework of morality, let's understand this by means of an example. There is ample evidence from quantum biology and works of award-winning physicists like Sir uh, Roger Penrose and Dr. Henry Stapp, etc., that our brain, which is made up of atoms, etc., functions quantum mechanically. At a given time, we could have a superposition of electrons inside one of our microtubules inside individual neurons. This could correspond to two different actions. They could be moral in nature, like saying a yes or a no to a morally correct deed. So this electron, which is in a superposition, it has a wave function which is associated to it and the consciousness or the mind of the human being will now affect this quantum event, just like in the double slit experiment. If it collapses the wave function of the electron in one way, it would correspond to a particular synapse leading the person to say yes to the morally correct deed. And it could be the other way, another synapse leading to the person saying no. So this is the mind now or the consciousness of the person which is affecting the universe, this time being its very brain at the fundamental level, exercising the free will which is so intimately attached to it.